Hello, welcome back. I'm continuing to play Ember Ward. I'm actually in the middle of a heroic mode run. I didn't even bother recording it because I was kind of intending it to be mostly a throwaway run. I was using it to collect like data about all the towers because I basically was like, well, I really want to beat the harder mode and I don't actually know for sure like which towers are best. So I put together like a little spreadsheet that I used to figure out what to do. But anyways, I'm at the final boss now, so I figured I would just give it a shot and see what happens. I also discovered an interesting strategy while I was playing uh, using the transmutation uh, relic, I think is what they're called in this game. But yeah, uh, let's get right into it. So the strategy I discovered is that this chaos transmuter, which randomly transforms your towers, will you know it does what it says but what's interesting is if at the start of the game you just buy a bunch of really cheap towers like this scrap tower as long as you survive the wave it'll transform them but the new towers actually keep the cell value of the tower that it was transformed into not the one you bought so you can basically use this to cheat a ton of extra gold in the first few rounds and even later on, like you can buy these cheaper big, big towers, like the giant dice tower, and it'll like transform into the fireball or boulder towers. Uh, so that ended up doing way, way better than I thought it would. So I figured I'd just give it a try and see if I could beat the boss with this. All right. Oh, and I did manage to get enough points for this overcharge thing finally, which uh, I haven't used it yet. I literally just unlocked it but it seems very, very, very strong. So looking forward to having that help out. Oh, let's see. Let's start with this. Just like getting our initial maze set up. Maybe something like this and this and this. Oops, I did not mean to block that off. Do this. Okay. That's okay. I would like to kind of force things to go this way for now. Maybe do something like this. So now that'll force everything to go through there. Um... Actually, let's think about this a little bit more. I think I want to have stuff spend a lot of time over here. So I probably want to direct things over here first. So I can maze this way. Mm, no, no, no. I think what I had was okay. Although I would like to get that range upgrade. So let's grab that. And we'll do this. I guess I'll have to grab that range upgrade later. This is fine for the start of the maze. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you buy like a bunch of these cheap towers, you can um, use that to essentially get free upgrades. Not just because of this, because then you can sell them and use them to buy what you actually want. Um, the only downside is you do have to buy the cheaper tower. Otherwise, if you buy like an expensive tower, it might downgrade into the, the cheaper towers. So that's what we're going to do. How much do these sell for? Nothing, right. That was the whole point of them being so cheap. And, uh, you know, maybe we can put a couple towers here as well. Put those out of the way. One here. And, I don't know, we can put one on one of the minecarts, I guess. Alright, so let's see how this goes. confused how these minecarts work because it looks like its range is increased but then when you hover over it the indicator suggests that its range is not increased 
Uh, and stuff is getting through, which is okay. Sometimes on the first round, things get through because you have all the crappy towers. But now a bunch of them have been upgraded. And you can see that they rolled into pretty good values there. I could sell these to get more gold than what I spent. Like I said, right, I could sell this for 15 gold and I paid 5 gold for it. So it's essentially getting a free tower. Um, do I want to do that, though? The thing is, if you don't sell it, the resell value of the tower goes down every round, right? So you do kind of want to sell them right away so that if it gets hit by the Chaos Transmuter again, you still get the extra money. And those will leave so that they can reroll into something better. Okay. So let's have the monsters go this way now. And we'll have them go... go... Wait, that blocks off that path there. So what do I want them to do? I want them to go, like, over this way and then back up, if possible. So let's do something like this, maybe? Or maybe I should just have them go straight down. Something like this. Uh, have him go over this way. Over there. I could leave this open here so that at the end of the round, what I could do is I could close this off. Something like this. Oh, but that'll block there off too. Well, I mean, there is a block I could put here that would block this off, and then I could force them to kind of go all the way back around. We'll see. So I don't want them to do that. Do this. And uh, these giant dice towers are actually really good to do this with the trick I mentioned, because they'll always upgrade into something better. And if it doesn't upgrade, it's still just a really good tower. So I've been building a lot of those. And uh, yeah, we'll just place a couple of these uh, scrap towers here. Well, I would like to put something on those mine cards. I'll just wait till I get a little bit of extra gold here so I can build another dice tower. Also, I didn't realize I got one of these per round. I thought it was once per battle based on the description. So I don't know if that's a bug, but I mean, I could just save these for the final boss. Uh, and I do actually need to place some of these, otherwise these monsters will get through. Okay, so hopefully the upgrade hits these scrap towers. Yeah, so see how these three got hit? I can sell this for 16 gold, but I only paid 10 for it. So. You know, I basically got 11 free gold out of that. And, uh, let's see. Oh, and this turned into a boulder tower. So, again, lots of... You're basically just cheating tons of gold. All right. Let's send them this way. And then send them up. Do something like this. Um, I can sell this tower. Put another dice tower here. Nice, 16. As long as you get a 10, well, I mean, you could actually get lower values than 10 and it's still pretty good value, but, uh, you know, if you get a 10, that's that's always pretty good. I'll actually show the spreadsheet, or I guess a link to the spreadsheet I used to figure out which towers are the best ones. All right, what do I want to do here? I definitely want to direct them this way. So I should probably start doing that there. That's actually not good for this round because I don't want them to go all the way over there. I could just block this off like this. That's okay for now. And uh, I do like putting a couple of these poison towers because they do a lot of damage to the little mobs that run through there, but otherwise they're just okay. Uh, let's put a bunch of these scrap towers down. You know, hopefully some of them will upgrade into better things. Oh, actually, 
actually, I did not want to put those there. Well, they'll still hit a little bit. It's fine. Oh, the tower just one-shot them. Pretty powerful. So these wolf guys are usually kind of a problem because they just, like, stun everything and then a bunch of monsters run through. But I think it should be okay. This dice tower should be able to take it out. I kind of stumbled on this by accident. <laughs> I wasn't, I actually thought this was bad. Although I guess if anyone really thinks about it, it makes sense that it should be good because you just, you know, spend, you buy cheap things and get better things out of it. But I didn't really think about it. Uh, so let's do this. Uh, can't put that there. Do this though. Oh, I wasn't actually paying attention to what towers transformed. Whoopsie. So this one I can get extra money from. This one sells for 20. And, uh... That's okay. Anything else that transformed, I'm fine with keeping just for the damage. So now I've made some space here. We'll sell this one. Well, I shouldn't have sold that one. I just wanted to put another dice tower here. A seven. That's not great, but, you know, there's a good chance it'll transform at some point in the round. So it's okay. Do maybe something like this. Something like this? No, that's not what I want. I need to send them this way, obviously. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have issues here. So I can just block this off for now. Force them that way. And maybe do this. I'm okay with that. Put another dice tower here. And maybe a poison tower here. And then just fill up the remaining spaces with these little scrap towers. I don't like putting scrap towers on those just because, you know, uh, these make such a huge difference to the damage of things that I usually do put like just one of the more expensive towers on them. But it, it is still good to put a scrap tower on those, but as you go later and later in the game, like the odds of a specific tower getting upgraded are just going to go down. So at that point, you, as you progress later in the game, you want to switch over to your regular towers. Oops, no, I didn't want to do that actually. I want to put another big tower here. I keep forgetting to put stuff on these little minecarts. Yeah, I haven't touched the boss. And, you know, by this point, I've cheated probably, like, at least 100 gold, if not more, from selling these towers for, you know, 15 or 20 each. That's not good. Hopefully they don't really get through there. Looks like I could be in trouble here. And the big guy got through, but nothing else should get through. I probably could have placed something there and saved it, but it's fine. So let's look at what transformed. Looks like a bunch of scrap towers turned into regular towers, which is fine. I'll just leave them. And, uh, yeah, we'll just continue placing things. really do anything. Uh, I do want to start mazing this over here, though. So maybe something like this. Maybe go back up. That's pretty good. Also do 
something like this. Oh, there's not enough space there. Well, this is fine. Do this. So now they're having to go all the way down here, and then I'll push them back up with something here in a bit. Maybe like here. I need something a little smaller than that. Straw. Yeah, something like this is good. That forces them to go back up. Uh, we can put this here. Oh, I still want more. That gives me plenty of space for some big towers, which I definitely want to have a lot of. Ooh, I got a one. That's not great. But even so, you know, hopefully it'll just transform into something else at some point. Um, and what I can do is put this here. I guess now I just put some towers down. Alright. <clears throat> it is funny when you get a 1 on these giant dice towers because they don't sell for anything and they're basically... Uh, weaker than, I think, a dice tower. Or sorry, they're almost as weak as just a basic tower, so you're paying like five times as much for a basic tower. Like a little bit worse than a basic tower. Yeah, I would definitely benefit from some more AoE, but um, like, I think part of the reason this works is because you kind of do need the towers to transform into the most expensive part uh, ones. Otherwise, I just wouldn't have nearly as much by this point, right? Because I I placed like so many of these with the gold that I got for free, essentially. Oh, hopefully not too many things escape though. Oh, that's scary. Almost lost it there. All right. Yeah. So this is great. You know, some of these big towers transforming is exactly what I want. Um. Now. What I would like to do is block this off, perhaps. Oh, I can't block it all off. Oh, right, I needed like a L block to make this work. Something like that. This here. I'm creating a lot more space here as well, which is great. Uh, I think I just want more AoE. This is the last wave, so obviously you should just spend your money how you would want to if you weren't using the like gold cheating thing because you're not. Your towers aren't going to transform anymore. Um, and then, you know, you can reclaim some of these positions if you have something you would rather have there. Um, going to spend this 200 gold on. I probably want to put some of these early on just to kill the little enemies that try to run through here. And um, something like this maybe. I want to put another big tower in as many places as I can. It looks like I might not be able to. Put this here I guess. So I can claim this double damage spot. Is there any more places for big towers? It doesn't look like there is. So yeah, I'm just going to fill every spot I can with regular towers now. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully that's enough. Let's see. big wolves that are really the problem because they slam things and there's just so much 
damage output from them. Uh, looks like it might be enough. Should I start using these? How do I get overcharging the dice towers? I think are probably the best ones to overcharge because they already have like insanely high damage output. So um, I feel like overcharging them is the best use of the towers. Oh yeah, this bus is not gonna make it. Yeah, so there you go. I uh, <laughs> I honestly was not expecting to beat the boss this time because, like I said, I was just kind of experimenting. I still haven't found two of the towers. I wonder what they are. Huh. But uh, yeah, the the spreadsheet I made definitely helped quite a bit. But I just kind of stumbling onto that transmuter strategy i think is what really did it because you just get so much free gold from it it's pretty crazy uh in any case i will uh share a link to the little spreadsheet i made that has the information about the towers i'll post a second video as well that kind of goes over the spreadsheet that i'll link in this one but it'll just be like a like an unlisted video with a link because i don't think most people would be interested in that anyways Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, if you have any cool strategies you found that um, you think would be helpful for taking down the boss, leave a comment and let me know. I'd be curious to try them out, because I kind of just found this one, like I said, by accident, um, and it worked way better than I thought it would. So, thanks for watching, and uh, have a nice rest of your day. Oh, and uh, right, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> See ya. I just took a look at the recording and I realized that when someone is playing, there's no way to tell what difficulty they were on. But uh, when you beat a mode, you get like this little crown here. So uh, there's my little crown. Uh, you know, I did beat the boss on Heroic there, but uh, that strategy I mentioned with the transmuter is just insanely strong. I'm pretty sure you can win any run if you get it, as long as you do that. So uh, that's that. And I just wanted to go over the spreadsheet that I mentioned for those who are kind of interested. And I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description as well. But here it is. Uh, it's pretty basic, honestly. This run was actually supposed to just be like a, a throwaway run. Like I said, I was just going to collect all this data here, which is just all the stats for the towers, basically. And uh, then I made this little calculation sheet here, which is what I used to figure out what I think the best strategy is. Um, and, you know, the the metrics I use aren't perfect, obviously, but I think they're decent. Uh, this one is the most basic one, which I think is what most people think of. You know, you look at the tower in the game and you're like, well, how much damage per second does this do? And if you go just off of this, then the best towers are the Dark Tower, because it has 10 damage per second. Uh, the Poison Gate Tower, because it does 42 damage per second. And the Giant Dice Tower, assuming you get a value of at least 10. Uh, but even with a value of at least 5, the giant dice is still better than most towers. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, I don't think this metric is great, though, because it ignores the fact that, like, your towers don't fire constantly. And it also ignores the fact that you had to pay for your towers. So the next one here is the DPS per gold. So this is how much damage this tower does per second per gold that you spent to buy it. So... Uh, once again, the poison towers look like they're the best ones. And the situation doesn't change too much, I think, for the most part. Um, the frost towers obviously are not purchased for the damage. They're purchased for the slow, so they do almost no damage. The drone is pretty good, surprisingly. Uh, I didn't really like the drones. I feel like things always get past them. Uh, the dice towers, what I was surprised about as well, they are... By far, I think, maybe the best towers. Um, you know, assuming you get an, a, a decent roll. But on average, you'll get, like, you know, the middle value. So this is a pretty accurate me metric. I wouldn't buy them as, like, your first tower because you might low roll and then you're just, you know, you're kind of doomed. But once you're in the middle and end of the game, I think those are probably the best towers to be buying because they're relatively cheap for their damage output. Uh, Icicle Towers are really, really insanely powerful if the enemy has low HP, but when the enemy has high HP, they're actually worse than a basic tower, so you definitely only want to put those at the end of your maze. Um, another thing I looked at is like how much damage the tower does per second uh, based on the number of tiles it takes up, because I noticed I would run out of space a lot 
So uh, you can look at this. I think this metric is not really that useful because you could always build a bigger maze usually. I think the last fight you kind of run out of space sometimes, but um, nothing much changes to be honest. The lightning tower is a lot more powerful in this metric, um, but that's assuming it hits five targets. Like if you, for me, I feel like my lightning towers usually hit like two or three targets and then they're actually a lot worse. Um, and once again, the dice towers are always just good. They, they seem to just be really good. Um, this next, these next two metrics I think are the most useful ones. Uh, the DPS per range is basically assuming like, let's say that this little square here is your tower, right? So this, this is your tower. Uh, and the enemies pass directly in front of it, like this, right? But your tower can only hit, like, a range, right? It hits, like, this range here. Um, so this is assuming if an enemy just walks, like, straight through its line of sight, uh, how much damage would it do? Like, what is what is its damage per second given its range, essentially? Um, and I don't think that really changed too much. Uh, it definitely made the bigger tower the bigger towers perform a lot better on this. Um, the dice tower is still just like by far the best tower to buy, uh, which is why like in that last round you saw I was just like prioritizing putting down as many of these as possible. Um, but yeah, like the fireball tower does really well. It, it hits 52 damage per second per range, uh, and this is not even taking into account the uh, the AOE around the target. This is just like the damage to the main target. And that's assuming two bounces. If you get four bounces, then it does really well, almost as well as it's getting close to the dice tower. The boulder tower does really well. And then, you know, if this hits multiple targets, then it's even better. Uh, the lightning tower really drops in efficiency there. Um, even if you like bump up the number of targets, it hits like four every shot. It's still not that great. The snowball tower is quite good in terms of damage and it has the slow effect. So that's pretty good. Um, but you're better off building one of these towers if you just want damage and using probably the frost tower for slowing things. And what else? The scrap tower is quite good um, for its gold cost, yes, but not for its range. It just does okay for its range. The dart tower is still pretty good. It's a lot worse than the bigger towers, obviously. And the poison gate actually gets a lot worse now because um, it only hits the square below it, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't outperform things as crazily as it did before. And finally, the last metric, DPS per area. I think this is the most useful one. So what this one is doing is, uh, you know, this is kind of a simplified situation, the DPS range one. Uh, what enemies really do, right, is they'll kind of like walk around because you're making a maze. So they'll, they'll walk around in like some weird pattern, right? It'll be something like this. Let's say that you got the enemies to walk around like this. Right? So this is like the maze you built. And the range of this tower, let's say it's something like this. Right? Uh, so what this metric does is it takes the area, the total area that this tower can hit in, so this entire rectangle I've selected, into account. And it says, okay, given the total area I can hit, the enemy walks through a certain number of these squares, right? And so that's what this area efficiency is. Uh, it's the number of these squares that are red, right? The number of squares with a red line through them in the game. If a quarter of the squares in the tower's range have a red line in them, then the area efficiency is 0.25. Uh, and again, this metric is not like that precise, but it's like a good way to get an understanding of like how good the towers actually are. So. Uh, if we look at this, uh, it, then I think this is the best metric because it, it kind of accurately adjusts for the poison gate's lack of range, right? It only hits directly beneath it. So the longer a the longer an enemy spends in the box, the worse the poison tower is because if you had put another tower there, it would have been able to fire way longer. Whereas the poison tower can only fire if an enemy walks directly beneath it. Um, the Icicle Tower does uh, not great if the enemy is high health, as always, but even if the enemy is very weak, it still does not outperform the bigger towers. So the Giant Dice Tower, by far, still way better than everything else. The Fireball Tower is way better because it bounces around. Um, even for less bounces, it's still really good. 
Um, the boulder tower is still good. The lightning tower I am not very impressed with. That's why in my playthrough you saw I would just sell them all to get the extra gold from cheating them out. Uh, it's because they, they're just not that good. Um, snowball tower is fine. And yeah, basically that's what this spreadsheet is. I had this little toggle here so you can see like what happens when it's on a damage tile because the bigger towers benefit less from a damage tile than the smaller towers do. Um, and you can adjust all the properties here. Like if you're like an insanely good mazer and you like get somehow to the point where you can use half the spaces, like half of these spaces are red somehow. Uh, I'm not sure how you would do that, but if you could, you could see what like the tower's performance is in that situation. Um, and yeah, that's how I figured out how to beat the boss basically. <laughs> I just looked at this spreadsheet and I was like, cool. Build as many dice towers as possible. Well, uh, I think I usually get like about quarter efficiency. Um, and then I think, like I said, I only ever hit two targets with my lightning, two or three. And I put that on that. So like given these parameters, which I think kind of reflects my gameplay, I, uh, for me, it was like, obviously, okay, just build as many dice towers as possible. Uh, if they upgrade into boulder and fireball towers, that's okay. But it's actually better well, so like if the if you can guarantee the boulder and fireball towers will hit more than one target, they're better than the dice tower. So I leave them if the dice tower transmutes into them. But yeah, the dice tower is better than anything else. If you can build a dice tower, you should build it. Um, but not as like your first couple towers, right? Like you need some basic towers or some of these other ones to get you through the first few levels. And then you should just start spamming these, at least the way I play. The dark towers are really good if you can put them early on in the maze. Um, and then the last thing was that the scrap towers do surprisingly well, right? That's why that transmutation strategy is so good uh, because the scrap towers do good damage. Uh, and if they upgrade, you can sell them for money and use them to buy more towers that do better damage uh, or just more scrap towers if you feel like it. Uh, eventually you start running out of space. So you do have to just start replacing them with other things that have like higher overall damage, even if they're not as gold efficient. But yeah. Uh, I hope this helps you, I guess, beat the game on Heroic if you're also interested in doing that. Um, I don't know what all the relics are in the game, so I didn't really take any of that into account. But usually the relics are just like bonuses to things. So, you know, I do think that if you were to follow this strategy, even with relics, it would still do better um, than just, I guess, doing something random. Or, you know, you can, like, take it into account by at least knowing what the value of the towers would be without any relics. Um, I also didn't take the masteries into account. Um, I guess I could do that, but I was just kind of interested in getting a, a general strategy. I didn't really care to, you know, map out the entire game. The, the only difference is that, like, some towers do a little more damage. Some towers change their attack speed a little bit. So... Again, you can eyeball it if you want, but I felt that this was enough for me to know what I needed to do. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. I will share the link to this in the description of the video, and yeah, have a nice rest of your day. See ya.